Hi guys, it's Victoria and today we are doing my TBR shelf bookshelf tour. So I'm doing this mainly to motivate myself to read all my books before I buy more. Um, my TBR shelf is out of control, it truly is. I don't enjoy having so many unread books because it means if I ever want to buy a book, I feel incredibly guilty about it. And so our goal for 2019 is to get through, if not all, at least most of these books that I'm about to show you. Alright, so first we have this top shelf here that's got mostly um, young adult literature and fantasy literature, I would say. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, and then here I have a box set of the Shadow and Bone trilogy, which consists of Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Rune and Rising, Elantris by Brandon Sanderson, Cinder by Marissa Meyer, which is book one in the Lunar Chronicles, and then here I have another box set of um, Philip Pullman and his Dark Materials, which consists of The Golden Compass, The Subtle Knife, and The Amber Spyglass. Actually, I have read The Golden Compass when I was a kid, but it was so long ago I don't remember and I want to read the trilogy, so I have to reread this anyways. The Space Trilogy is next by C.S. Lewis and it starts with Out of the Silent Planet. Book two is Paralandra, and then book three is That Hideous Strength. Next up I have A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. And then over here I have the last book of the Mortal Instruments series, book six. I think I've been avoiding it because look at how huge it is. And then also the last book in the Infernal Devices series, which is Clockwork Princess. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the original screenplay by J.K. Rowling. The Muse by Jesse Burton, and I got this for Christmas last year, and I'm ashamed that I hadn't, haven't read it yet. Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I actually started Illuminae, however, I did it on audiobook, and I actually was super confused by the audiobook, and I just decided to get a hard copy because I felt like I didn't know what was going on, and I know a lot of people just say, oh, the audiobook's the best thing ever. For me, I think the hard copy will be better because then I can, like, see what's going on. <laughs> a compilation of H.P. Lovecraft called Tales of Horror. And isn't that the, just the most beautiful cover? Like, what the heck? Foucault's Pendulum by Umberto Eco. And the only reason I bought this was because I've read The Name of the Rose, like way back in high school. And then I happened to find this one at a library used book sale. I honestly don't know what it's about, but I'm so intimidated by it because you see this? Do you see this? And then the font is like small, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever going to read it, but it's there. Next up I have The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, which I actually plan on reading in December. Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, which I also would like to read in December, but we'll see if it happens. The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, and again, just take a moment, look at how beautiful this book is. It's so beautiful. Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. I have not read any Rainbow Rowell, but I found this at a used bookstore again, so I thought I'd pick it up. Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman, and I will hopefully get to this in December as well because I have Red Scythe and I need to know what happens next. This is The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. I actually read an abridged version and I think this is the real, the real copy, so um, I would like to get to that someday. Naked copy of the works of Oscar Wilde. And then we have a Mark Twain compilation, The Complete Stories of, oh, sorry, The Complete Short Stories of Mark Twain. And then we have another naked copy of Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. On the next shelf down, again, it's double stacked. So this first row, we have, if I can get it out of here, oh my gosh. A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. Selected Poetry by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. And this is a Borders copy. R.I.P. Borders. See? Borders. Ugh, so sad. Another Borders copy of Paradise Lost and Paradise Regained by John Milton. Tina Fey, Boss of Hands. Play Your Piano by Kurt Vonnegut. The Shining. Oh, and that's very shiny. Sorry. There. The Shining by Stephen King. On Writing by Stephen King. And finally, Misery. Oh, there. Misery by Stephen King. 
Next up we have My Lady Jane, which is by a bunch of different people. Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. Time of the Locust by Moroa Yejide. Probably butchered that name. Anonymous Rex by Eric Garcia, which is apparently about a dinosaur detective. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm here for it. Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. The Iliad by Homer. A collection of poems by C.S. Lewis. Sophie's World by Justine Garter. Sure, that's, that's how you pronounce it. Let's just pretend that's correct. Native Son by Richard Wright. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood. Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel. Ethan Frome by Edith Wharton. And Gustav Flaubert's Madame Bovary. And behind those books we have kind of a hodgepodge of fantasy and then a random non-fantasy. American Gods by Neil Gaiman. The first two books in the Earthsea Chronicles trilogy, mm, something like that. I've actually read The Wizard of Earthsea, I've already read this one, but I, I need to reread it before I read book two, which is The Tombs of Atawan. So that's why I have it on this shelf, is because I do need to reread it before I continue on with the series, because it's just been too long, I don't just don't remember anything really. Next we have The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss, which I strictly bought because so many people on booktube talk about it. Although I'm afraid to start it because I, as I understand, the third book has been taking apparently many, many years to be finished and people are starting to worry if it's ever going to be finished, but everyone says it's so good so I might as well read it too. But hey, maybe by the time I get around to these, the third book will be out. There you go. That's my master plan. Next up, I have the first three books in the Eye of the World series, or sorry, the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. I have actually read the first one, but again, it's one of those things where it's been so long since I read it that in order to continue on with the series, I would really have to reread that one. So it's on the shelf because it needs a reread. So I have book one, book two, and book three, and apparently I think there's like 14 books in the series or something insane like that. So if and when I do decide to pick this back up, um, I want to read them close enough together so that I don't completely forget what happens like I did with the first book. Next up I have Dune and Dune Messiah by Frank Herbert. And again, I have read Dune, but it's been maybe four years and I don't remember it well enough to continue on with the series. And I actually don't know how many books are in the Dune series. Anybody know? I'm not sure. I also have this companion book to Dune. It's called The Road to Dune. Oh, and sadly it does have a border sticker on it so that can tell you how long ago I got this book and haven't read it yet. If you're wondering what Borders is, <laughs> it's um, a bookstore that was kind of like a Barnes & Noble but they went out of business. Very sad. This one I actually got very recently. It's a collection of short stories by Frank Herbert, who is the author of Dune. You might recognize this from my last haul. This is And I Darken by Kirsten White. Next we have Red Queen by Victoria Avard. I've actually started this a couple times and then put it down. So maybe I will try one more time and then if I lose interest again, I'll just give up on that series. But I don't know, this series gets mixed reviews, but I felt like it might be something that I would enjoy, so. Nah, I'm I'm not totally done with it yet. The Martian by Andy Weir. The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. The Tenth Circle by Jodie Picoult. And Kushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. Next down we have a shelf that's actually not double stacked. Yay! The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. And actually I have read Anne of Green Gables. It's just I, I would like to reread it because I would like to read the other books in the series. So I definitely need to reread this one. Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. This is one of those books that I bought like a million years ago and it just keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. So maybe an unhaul is in order. I'm not sure, but I, I still want to read it. So that's why I've been keep keeping it, but can't keep it forever. The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I'm, I think I just pronounced like eight things wrong. <laughs> On the Road by Jack Kerouac. We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Cranford and Other Stories by Elizabeth Gaskell. Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. 
The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. Then I have two books by Amy Tan, The Joy Luck Club, and The Bone Setter's Daughter. Atonement by Ian McEwen. I have seen the movie to this, actually. Ordeal by Innocence by Agatha Christie. And I have not read any Agatha Christie. I'm not sure if this is the place to start, but I bought it, so we're going to read it. Small Wonder Essays by Barbara Kingsolver. Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. This is another one that's been on my shelf for many years, and I've never wanted to pick it up, so I'm not sure. Maybe I should just give up on this one, too. I'll hang on to it for a little bit longer, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. The Giver by Lois Lowry. And finally, we have made it to the bottom shelf. Hooray! You're Never Weird on the Internet, Almost, by Felicia Day. This is actually one I wanted to read for nonfiction November, but um, I'm not totally sure it's gonna happen because I'm still reading other books. So, we'll see. I, I want to read this soon, though. Everybody Lies, Big Data, New Data, and What the Internet Can Tell Us About Who We Really Are, by Seth Stevens Davidowitz. The Case for Faith by Lee Strobel. The Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer. Getting It Right by Mike Fabrez. And he's actually the, the pastor to my uh, parents' church, so they gave me this book. The Pursuit of Holiness by Jerry Bridges. The Jesus Storybook Bible by, uh, who is this by? Written by Sally Lloyd-Jones and illustrated by Yago. This may seem like a weird pick. Um, it was given to me by someone can't remember who. This one was also a gift. It's Thoughts to Make Your Heart Sing by Sally Lloyd-Jones and Iago. So uh, maybe what this was given to me by the same person, I'm guessing. Feminine Appeal by Carolyn Mahaney. This was a gift from my mom. An Unhurried Life by Alan Fadling. The Reason for God by Timothy Keller. Resisting Happiness by Matthew Kelly. My friend gave me this one. Oh, sorry. And then Lifeline for Tough Times by Mike Fabrez. Again, this was my parents pastor and they gave me this book so that first row was mostly like theology books and christian books and a lot of things that people have given me we have a few more um christian books in that same vein we have worship matters by bob coughlin the passion of jesus christ by john piper i don't have enough faith to be an atheist by norman l Gies geisler and frank turek and then two c.s lewis books the great divorce and the problem of pain and I believe the rest are all back to fiction. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Emma by Jane Austen. Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. I kind of think I read this when I was a kid, but I don't remember. Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Charles Dickens, The Old Curiosity Shop. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Revolution is Not a Dinner Party by Ying Chain Compostine. An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. I've read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and I have not yet read Through the Looking Glass. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Frank Baum. Wild Magic by Tamara Pierce, which is book one in the series. The Stranger by Albert Camus. Howard's End by E.M. Forster. Empire Falls by Richard Russo. This is another one I've had like since high school or something and just for some reason never read it. A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled. Hosseini, and The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. The Time Travelers, bleh. The Time Travelers, right? Wife, oh my gosh. By Audrey Niffenegger. I'm just gonna have to move on from that one. And the last book I have to show you is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And we did it! I didn't know if we were gonna survive, but we survived. <laughs> Um, let me know what books should I start with? Are there any books that jumped out at you on my TBR shelves that you're just like, you need to read this right now? If you would like to see a bookshelf tour part one, that includes all of my books that I have read on my shelf. I'll go ahead and link that in the description down below so you can check that out. I hope you're having a great day, week, month, wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you next time. Chat with you in the comments in the meantime. Bye-bye.